you go to Chop House or you go to Longhorn, you really don't spend a lot of time on that on that uh, appetizer. I mean, on that menu, do you? You spend more time on eating the work. I mean, eating the food. And that's how it is when you come in here. You should spend a lot of time eating the word, amen, because you need the word to survive. Let me say that again. You need the word to survive. You need the word to survive, amen. The word follow your place you carry it. Did y'all get that? The word follow you every place you carry it, Okay. So if you don't have no word, what is it that you carry? What is it that you want? What is it that you want birth out? You see? So we have to want the word of God. So we have to have a thirst and a hunger for the word. The Bible says, listen, quench not Holy Spirit. We shouldn't quench him. But a lot of us, we do. We quench Holy Spirit. We quench the one who is there to give us the knowledge and the secrets and the thoughts of God. That is the one who we, we silence. He is our helper. You see? So we gonna, we gonna, we're, we're not going to teach on Holy Spirit today, but it's preparing you because we're going to really look at Holy Spirit uh, as, we, as we fade out 2023. Amen, because we're going to need him a little bit more in 24. And they ain't the theme for 24 either, okay? That sound good, though, you know, a little bit more in 24. But we're going to need him, amen, we're going to need him. So if you have your Bible, let's go to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matthew, the 16th chapter, a very familiar scripture of you being in the Word and been reading the word and studying the word and meditating on the word. And, but we're going to pull from this a little bit more. Amen. So we can really apply it to our lives. Amen. Amen. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matthew 16, starting at verse 13, NIV. And when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. So let's look at the last part. He says, but what about you? Who is Jesus to you? That was his main focus when you look at this because he really, he's really not concerned about the world per se. At this time, he is focused on the ones who are calling themselves followers of him. Who are calling themselves Christians. He says, but what about you? A lot of times we need to ask ourselves that question. What is Jesus or who is Jesus to me? But sometimes we start off with that what? What is Jesus? Just like we say, what is the Holy, what is the Holy Spirit? It's not, it's not, he's not a what. He's a he's a who. He is a person. Jesus is a person. God is a person. A spirit. Okay? So we need to know who is it that we're serving. How many of us can really answer that question if somebody say, well, what is the difference between the God you serve and the God I serve? Or why are you saved? Or what does salvation consist of? Or who is this Jesus? Who is this Messiah? What response will we have? So one thing God is saying here and Jesus is showing here that it is time for us to understand who we serve. Who is your master? 
Who is your Lord? Who is your boss? Who is your, your supervisor? Who, who is your president? Who is in charge of your life? A lot of us, we go, we, 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 we're, we're walking around, listen to this, we're walking around with God, but we're not walking with God. Let me say that again. We're walking around with God, but we're not walking with him. Okay? What does that mean? Let me give you an example. Co-pastor and I, if we went to Opry Mills Mall or if we went to uh, the Tanger Outlet or somewhere, you know, we can be walking around a crowd of people, but we're not with them. We're not intimate with them. We're intimate with one another. We know our purpose for being there. We know each other's purpose and reasoning for being there. So because we're around the crowd, that doesn't mean that that they their their issue or their reasoning for being there is important to us. And a lot of us, we're doing the same thing. We're we're walking around the word of God. We're being around believers. We're being around other uh, uh, so-called Christians. Listen to this. We're being around the church, but that doesn't mean nothing to God. Because being around the church, coming to church, joining the church, being affiliated with a church doesn't mean nothing to God. Because he wants us to be the church. What is the word doing for you? How is the word impacting your lives? How is the word changing your mindsets? And a lot of us, we're like these disciples here where we are around the word, but we're not intimate with the word. We have to be intimate with the word. We spend more time on our iPads, our iPhones, our i everything. Listen to that. We spend so much time on our iPhone, our iPad, our i tablets, our i i everything, right? All those eyes. I know somebody else that wanted to, that that was seeing a lot of i does i that and got himself in trouble, right? But how much time do we spend with God? How much time do we spend on that iPhone and that iPad looking at scriptures? Or how much time we, we, we focus on Facebook and Instagram and, and what's, what's the new thing, the X, the X, what do, what do they call itself now, X? Is it X? Is that Twitter? X? How much of us spend so much time searching those platforms and the word of God is in the palm of our hands. Every situation we need, every answer to our issue is in the palm of our hands. Everything that we need is right here. But we don't know really what we have. We really don't. Because if God says, well, who am I to you? Is he your Lord? Or is he just your Savior? So as we have been stretched for 2023, there's a reason for that stretching. But a lot of us, we're going to miss it when we enter 24 because we're still walking in our pain, walking in our misery, walking in the, in, 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 in the, in the, 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 the things that we've been dealing with in 2023 and still going to be complaining about it in 24 and we're going to miss the purpose of being stretched. 
when God stretches us, he stretches, he's stretching us so we're able to handle something that we've never been able to handle before. Anytime you go to, how many of y'all work out? You say, you say I, ain't raise, I ain't raised my hand either, huh? Because <laughs> co-pastor, she gone, she'll, she'll tell you. But when you go, you know, we, when, when I was in the military, you stretch. Before you go running, you got to stretch. Everybody stand up. Stand up for a minute. Stand up for a minute. I want everybody to, to spread their legs like this. And I want you to lean to your right. Keep that left leg straight and lean to your right until you feel that stretch. You feel that stretch right there? If you ain't feeling it, you ain't trying hard enough. See, and that's what's wrong with us now. We don't want to try. Come on, go, go that way. Feel that stretch. You should feel it. You should feel something right there, right? And then, but some of us, guess what? When we feel that one pain, we don't want to go no farther than that. You see? Y'all can sit down. You got what? <laughs> we find everything else to complain about instead of saying, stretch me, Lord. I need to be stretched. Because, listen, the farther you go down, you see this? That's because I've been stretched. You see? I can go a little bit farther, too. Now, I'm not going all the way down to the ground because I ain't been stretched enough for that. Okay? But if I continue to do this and not be afraid of the stretch, not be afraid of what I'm going through, it may hurt. It don't feel good. But it's necessary in order for God to get you to a place where he can get you a little bit lower. You see? So we can't be afraid of the stretch. So Jesus is stretching their minds right now when it comes to who am I to you? this Antonio who am I you see so we've been talking about power for the past couple of weeks especially last month the power that he has given us he's given us power to lay hands on the sick he gave us power to raise the dead he's gave us power to cast out demons but if we don't know who we are who we are, and if we don't know who he is to us, how can we even believe what he's telling us? I'm giving you power. I'm giving you something. It's a difference in, in between, hey, I'm going to loan you this, or I'm going to allow you to, you know, uh, borrow this, compared to me giving it to you. When I give you something, guess what? It transfers and become yours. It's your property now. You have the ability to use it the way that you desire to use it with some limitations. Okay? But if we don't believe who the source is we won't never function in the power that God has given to us. God has made, listen, God don't really care about us being called Christians. He never called us Christians. He don't care about that. God wants us to become disciples. Students of the word. He told his apostles to go and make disciples. Not make Christians. Everybody call themselves Christians and, and, and don't have one Christ-like example 
characteristic or anything in them, but they call themselves a Christian. God is looking for disciples because he's making disciples, and when he makes disciples, then guess what? They can go forth and make other disciples. He said that greater works shall you do, Sister Anna. Greater works that you can do, Sister Davida. But you have to believe that it can happen through you. Go to Luke, the 10th chapter. Jesus starts off here and he says what? Behold. Behold. He's saying, listen, you must see this. You must understand this. We have to look at, we have to dissect this, not dissect, (laughs) dissect these words, amen, to get an understanding of what he is saying. If it's in the word, it's a reason behind it. He says, behold, you must see see this. You must understand what I'm about to tell you. You can't forget this because he's making disciples. He says, behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions. I have given it unto you. The trample to what? Trample means to what? Walk on, over, on top of. Your serpent and your scorpions is those demons and those issues that you're faced with. He said, I've given you power and authority to have over your issues. So why are you keep coming to me with your issues and you got the power and the authority? Because we don't believe. We thank God as an Indian giver. We think because and, and the reason that we think, thank you, Holy Spirit, the reason that we think he is an un, a, a, a Indian giver is because we look at, at him like man. Instead of like God. I have given you power and authority over every situation that you're facing. You have the control, you have the authority, you have the power, so why are you crying to me? We should stop going to God in prayer, ask him to help me in these situations, and we should be going to say, and say, God, thank you. What does your word say? I have power and authority. Show me. Show me how to conquer this. Show me how to conquer that. Show me how to advance over this or advance over that. Show me. Because your words say you have given me power and authority over it. Because if we if 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 God came in and did every single thing for us, then we would never utilize what He has given us. You see? It's just like your kids when they become adults. When they call and still want money and they grown now and got their own job and they still want mom and daddy to provide. When do they ever grow up? You see? When do they ever get to that place where 
that source there is cut off. And that's what we have to realize. That source there is cut off because every time we step in to help, guess what? We become their God. Because the first time they need an issue, uh, need something, they come running to us instead of running to. So we become there. But when you stop, then they don't have no choice but to run to God or don't get their needs met. You see? So. He has given us the power and the authority, but look at this. It goes on and it says, it's, 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 not real, it's not the physical strength, but it's the mental ability is where the fight is. That's where that struggle is at. You see, it goes back to what? Our thinking. We can't get out of this thinking, Brother Elwood. You see? You can't, you can't, you can't because that, that, that thinking, the mental capacity, the mental ability to know, do you know who you really are? Do you know what you possess? Because if you don't know what you possess, then guess what? You will always deny Christ because when you deny the ability that's in you, you are denying the person who gave you that ability also. So we have to know, this has to be ingrained in our spirit, man, to know that you know that you got power and authority over everything. There is no situation greater than God's. None. None. He says your faith is as small as a mustard seed. This small, just the seed, okay? You can move a mountain, which is much bigger than that seed, right? So what is he saying? He said, I want you to look at your faith before you look at the situation. We look at the mountain without looking at the seed. The mountain becomes priority. My issue is my priority. My issue is, is bigger than everything else. But he said, you forget about the seed. The seed is the faith. You forget about the faith. You forget about the word of God because of the problem that you're facing. Go back to the seed. Go back to the word of God. Start with what you have been using for years, and that's the word. You see? Are you victorious on this morning? Are you a conqueror on this morning? Are you a more than a conqueror on this morning? Are you the head and not the tail? Are you above and not beneath? Are you superior over your needs? Do you have the power over your issue? I ain't gonna lie to amens. Cause you know what that amen says? It says I'm in agreement with your word. But listen, that agreement is not only here, it has to be connected to, you see? So he says, look, he says this, he says, over all the power that the enemy possesses and nothing shall any way harm you. You see that nothing shall any way harm you because you have the power. Let's go to Matthew 16, go back to Matthew 16, 15 verse. 
I want to walk through this. Matthew 16 and 15, Mm -hmm. NIV. But what about you, he asked? Who do you say I am? Mm -hmm. Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Do you see that? The God we serve is alive. His word is alive. We're not living off of what somebody said. We're living off of what somebody is saying. That's how we have to look at the word of God. We take this book and we look at it as as past tense. But his word is alive. He did say it, but he's also saying it over and over again. Why? To build our faith. The Jesus we serve is not dead. His promises are not dead. His blessings is not dead. It's alive. But we treat him like he's dead. We treat him like he's still in the grave. We put him back on the cross all the time. But the God we serve is alive. And Peter said, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living. The living the living God. And he went ahead and said what? We got up there in 17? No? Who got in 17? Somebody pull up. Matthew 16, 17. Uh, KJV will be fine. Mm-hmm. And Jesus answered and said unto him, mm-hmm. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in he heaven. He called him blessed when he received the revelation. You see that? He called him blessed. So why? So that's I got a problem with that. He called him blessed. So that means he wasn't blessed until he received revelation. He wasn't blessed until he made contact with Holy Spirit. He wasn't blessed, listen, until he was obedient to what he heard. You see that? He was obedient to say something because nobody else said a word. And he says, for you are, what? The son of the living God. And he said, what? He said, blessed art thou, uh-huh. Simon Barjona, mm-hmm. for bless, flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, mm-hmm. but my Father which is in heaven. See, man can't give you everything. Some things God is the only one that can give you that. I don't care how anointed you may be. Guess what? And even when man give it to you, it's not him or her anyway. 
it's the spirit that's 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 trans that's the that's 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 giving that information. You see? So you have to understand that. Keep going. Verse 18. Mm-hmm. Matthew 16 and 18 in KJV. Mm-hmm. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. Okay, stop right there. Let's go to John and 10. We're gonna come back to that. John 10 10. Come on. Mm-hmm. John 10 10 KJV. Mm-hmm. The thief cometh not but for to steal mm-hmm. and to kill mm-hmm. and to destroy. Mm-hmm. I come that they might have life mm-hmm. and that they might have it more abundantly. So he said, because I am the living God, we have to know who we serve him, right? Because I am the living God, he says, listen, you have to know that if anything in your life is being destroyed, if, any, if you're losing anything in your life, if you're being defeated in your life, I have nothing to do with that. So if your life is being defeated, God is not part of that. So why do we go to God and say, God, why are you destroying this? Why, 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 God, why, why are you, why are we blaming him? And he's telling us clear as day. He says, the thief come. The thief understands his purpose on earth better than we do. That is his agenda. What does the devil come to do? He comes to kill. He comes to steal. He comes to destroy. But look how sneaky it is. He comes to steal first. And then if you don't stop him right here, then he elevates to killing. And if you don't stop him here, then he's his final goal and destiny and desire is to destroy every single one of us. But you see how God doesn't allow him to come in and destroy us immediately. There are steps. You see? Because the enemy wants to come in and destroy every part of our lives like that. But God said, you don't have that much power and authority to do so because they have the power and authority in them to defeat you. So that goes back to our scripture. When the enemy comes in like a flood, that's what we say, that he comes in like a flood, but he doesn't come in like a flood. He comes in, and like a flood, God raises a standard because he doesn't have that much power. So we initially see the attack coming in our lives, I don't care if it's in your marriage, I don't care if it's in your finances, I don't care if it's in your health. When we first see it, guess what, baby? You're not going to die from that. It's not going to kill you. He's trying to steal something from you. And guess what he's trying to steal? Your joy. You see? So when you have no joy, you have no strength. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. I hate seeing, I don't use the word hate, I hate seeing Christians walking around like, like they done lost everything. And you can see it all on their face. They're so depressed and so sad. Put some joy on your face. What we say, we say in the word, fake it till you make it. Fake it. 
I may be going through all kinds of stuff, but I'm going to fake it. You won't know that I'm going through because, listen, I'm doing just that. I'm going through it, and I'm not just sitting there wobbling in it. And when you go through it, guess what? You need to stay out of it. And don't go back into it. But he comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. But God say, I have come that you might have what? Life. Speak to your situation. The devil is a liar. My kids will prosper. My marriage will be restored. My health will be restored. My mind will be restored. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life over your situation. Because, listen to this, because God said, I have given you so much power and authority that whatever you speak can cause death or life. Did y'all catch that? I've given you that much authority that whatever you speak, whatever you say can cause death or life. Death or life is in the power of what? What you say. Those are not just words to fill up a gap in, in, in Scripture. He said, because you're made in my image and my likeness. He says, whatever you say, whatever, whatever. Death and life is in what you say. Can y'all think about that for a minute? If my kids get on my nerves and I, and I, and I look at them and say, you're going to be some negative, you know the power in what I just said? But we just waste words and allow words to just come out of our mouth, you know, just to, just to sound good. But he says, the power in your lips, in your tongue, in your words, you will eat the fruits. Put that, put that up there, um, that scripture. I don't, it's not on there. Put that up there. Was it Proverbs eighteen twenty one, I believe? Because if we're going to act like God, we need to start speaking like God. Because we're not understanding the impact and the effects of our words. We have to be careful in what we say. To people and also over people. Because Jesus was walking, listen to this. Jesus was walking, he 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 went to to to, to get a fig off a fig tree, and guess what? It was nothing there. What did Jesus do? He cursed that tree. And he went on by his business. Come back through, Jesus ain't paying no attention. The disciples saying, Hey, hey, you can look at that tree. You see, he, he, he won't focus on that. Why? Because he knew the power of his words. He told Abraham, God did, whoever curses you will be cursed. He told who? Abraham. We are the children of who? We fall in Abraham's lineage. 
So whoever blesses y'all, God said, I'll bless them. But we feel like we got to, we got to, because you cursed me, I, I got to get you back. You ain't got to do nothing. Just shake your head and say, baby, you don't know who you just, you don't know what you just did. Oh, my goodness. That's all you got to say. He said, death and life. He wants us to focus on this. Of what not to do. Death and life are in whose power? Whose power? It's in your power. And those who what? Love it. Love what? <laughs> Whatever you say. Which one do you love? Which one do you love? One of the two you love. Huh? Which one do you love? Huh? Which one do you love? Well, okay, so what is it that you're saying? What is it that you're saying? If you love life, when that bad report comes and say, I see a lump, that report didn't come from your tone. It came from somebody else's tone. It says, it only impacts you when you say it. It only impacts you when you speak it. And those who love it will what? Eat it. Or let me say it like this. And those who love it will see the fruits of it. Because death and life is in the power of your mama tongue. Of your tongue. That's why we need to think about what we're thinking about before we even say it. So when the bad report comes, say, mate, if you need clarification, can you repeat yourself? I'm not going to say it. I just, want, I just want to hear what you're saying. And then I need to take some time and sit back. Because see, when you're hearing it, you're doing what? You're being swift to hear, slow folder. So I need to sit back and let it meditate on what you're saying. Now, the pictures that I see or the results that I see are, are is it showing what they're saying? It may. It may show that. I'm about to lose my job. There's my name on the list. I may see, I may see it on there. but I refuse to speak what I see. You speak what you want to manifest in your life. Are y'all getting that? Go to my title slide. We ain't got to, let's at least get the title out, out the way. Okay? 
So the question is, who's supplying your power? Who's supplying it? Who's in control? Who has authority? God doesn't force himself on no one. You have to choose. You see? Co pastor didn't force herself on me, Brother Santonio. Although I looked good about 30 years ago. You know, I had a six pack, I was slim and trim. You know, she ain't forced herself on me. I ain't forced myself on her. But we was attracted to one another. You see? And it's the same thing when it comes to God. He's not going to force himself on us. We have to choose and decide if we want him to be our, supply our power or not. Amen. First, uh, First Peter 5 and 8. We're going to look at this in two translations. We'll start off with the ESV. Be sober-minded. Mm -hmm. Be watchful. Mm -hmm. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, mm -hmm. seeking someone to devour. Mm -hmm. So who's 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 the adversary? The devil, and he is seeking, right? Who can I devour? Who can I take out? Whose life? I can enter into whose home I can I can I have access to we give Satan access to our lives you don't have the power to take it When he told Jesus in the, in, the, in, the, in the wilderness, he said, I can give you all these kingdoms. Because why? That power and authority, was, it was given to me. I didn't take it. It was handed over to me. That show you right there what type of power he doesn't have. He don't have the power to take anything from you. He can't take it. He can't take your mind. He can't take your marriage. He can't take your health. He can't take your job. He can't take anything from you. So when we start losing things, it's because we freely gave him access to come in to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So that's why he says here, be, be sober-minded. Be aware of this. Be watchful of what's going on around you. Don't let people take advantage of you. Know that everything starts off in the spiritual realm first. Don't take anything lightly and say, oh, they just playing. No. You see? Let's look at let's look at the next translation. The easy translation. First Peter five and eight, easy verse eight. Think seriously about how you live. Think seriously about how you live. Meditate on it. Look at your lives. Be serious with yourself. If you know there's some areas in your life that you need to tighten up, be serious with yourself. Besides God, you're the only one that know you better than anybody else. Be serious with yourself. Your prayer life ain't the way it should be. Be serious with yourself. 
your intimacy with, with God is not there, be serious with yourself. And say, I need to tighten some things up. I need to get back to loving God the way that I started off loving him. Some of us, we was on fire for God when we first got saved. But what took that away? Listen to what I said. What took that away? Nothing took it away. You gave it away. Because of the things that's happening around you. But say no more. Come on. Watch carefully for danger. Mm -hmm. Remember that the devil. You can always see when the enemy is approaching. But we can miss out on those signs when they come in. You can always see it. But if you're not sober minded, you miss out on it. Keep going. Remember that the devil is your enemy. Mm -hmm. He wants to hurt you. Mm -hmm. He walks about like a hungry lion. He desires to hurt you. He is looking for someone to kill and then eat them. You see? So we know how he responds. We know his desires. We know what, what he, ex what he is, is seeking when it comes to us. We know that if we play with the enemy, we're giving him access. That's just all to it. So it goes back to the beginning. How serious are you when it comes to your life with God? We can pray all day long, I want more of you. And then we don't do anything about it. We don't show effort. We don't put actions towards our words. We have to make that choice. The Bible says, choose ye this day whom you will serve. The choice is in our hands. And we have to decide. We're going to stop there. We're standing. This word today was for you to really think about your relationship with Christ. We love God. And God knows if we really do or not. But he's designed for us to start using the things that he has given unto us. If he has given us power, if he has given us authority, he said, use it. While we're allowed to sit there to collect dust, he said, use it. And the more you use it, the more it becomes like second nature to you. When you're faced with the problem, you immediately know how to go to the Word. You immediately know how to go pray. 
Sickness comes to you, you immediately know how to lay hands on it, how to cast it out. That's where God is trying to get us, to where we function like him here on earth. I wanted to show y'all something today and I'm going to do it next week because we know that his word doesn't return unto him void. But when we look at this scripture, we're going we're gonna to kind of question that. Not question that if it's true or not, question why we're not seeing it. Why is it not happening in our lives? We need to start being a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. All heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come before you right now, God. We give you honor, glory, and praise. God, we thank you that your word is active. Your word is alive. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. So even as we heard your word on today, I pray, God, that it will work in the lives of of everyone who have heard your word or who will hear your word. We must know which source is supplying our power. If we have the power, we need to operate in the power and the authority that God has given unto us. He didn't leave us here to be defeated. He left us here so we can trample upon every area that we feel that we're being defeated in. When trials and tribulations come, they come to A, tribulations come to kill us, but trials come to build us up. Trials come to show us areas that we need more work in that we need to stretch out a little bit more. So God, I pray right now that we understand the difference between the two and that we don't, we don't take both trials and tribulations and look at them as being the same. There is a difference. And when we understand the difference, then we will know how to respond to every single one of them when they come. So God, we thank you that you come, that we may have life and that we may have it more abundant. By the power of your word. So I thank you that we serve a living God. superior over all gods. That you are the great I am. You are El Elyon. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So Father, we honor you. We glorify you. And we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. If there's anyone on the sound of my voice in-house or if you're streaming online and you don't have a relationship with Christ, you will never have this power. You will never understand the authority that has been given unto you. But you have to have Jesus in your life. It's simple. I call it the ABCs of salvation. A, acknowledge that you are separated from God. Acknowledge that he came from heaven, died on the cross for your sins and my sins. Acknowledge and know that he was, he was risen on the third day 
so we may have life. And he's sitting on the right hand of the Father to be an advocate for us, to, to intercede for us. Believe those things and confess with your mouth that he is not only your Savior, but also your Lord. And he will come into your life. And now you can not just be walking among with him, but you'll be walking with him. If that's you and you're online, ask that you inbox me. Let, let me know that you have accepted Christ as your personal Savior so I can get some teaching material out to you. You must get into a teaching ministry to learn about this new walk, this new life, this new family that you have become a part of. You're welcome to join us here at Family of Faith Ministries, 414 North Front Street, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Sundays at 10 a.m., Wednesday for Word Wednesday for one hour at 7 p.m. We are transformed minds and living a lifestyle of faith. And according to Romans 10, 17, faith come up by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God bless you. Love you. And we will see you next week.